every family, when every family begins, it's like you are beginning a new storybook. And uh, if you if you were fans of children's books, I don't know if you were big fans of children's books, you probably remember that every family, children book or most children be- books, storybooks begin with the words. Once upon a time, family begins. Really, it's like really, you are beginning a new story. No, book, Baba, right? But and, uh, really, if, really, if you Sanya were fans Elisa. of children's Once books, upon a time, there was Alex big fans of children's and Lisa. Books. You probably and today, remember that you guys are starting a new story books. Story books. Story books begin a with story the book of Once Upon a Time, Once upon Alex a time, and Lisa. Really, really like, today you're, you're starting that new, new story, story Baba, where right? but uh, we're going really, to read, really, your friends are going to read, your parents are going to read, your children are going to read about your family story, how you lived, what kind of emotions you expressed, how you loved each other, how you treated each other. That is the story that you're writing. And most importantly, this is a story that you're writing together to show and glorify God, your creator. So, uh, just as any story, just as any storybook, your family storybook is going to include some times of joy, like today, that's the starting point, right? It's going to include some times of celebrations when you have children, when you have, when you're celebrating your one year anniversary, two year anniversary, and then you're going to forget till you're celebrating 10 year anniversary, right? You're going to have some fun times, but there will be just like in any storybook, there'll be times when you're sad, when you're silent, when you're maybe experiencing pain, some type of miscommunication, misunderstandings, and that's okay. Those things have to happen. The key is, how do you react to those things? How do you react to times when you're happy? And how do you react to times that are sad times, right? So, I just want to share that the beauty of the family that trusts God The reason why a family who trusts God and builds their foundation on scriptures, on trusting God, the beauty of such family is that they love each other even when times are tough. That they love each other even when they disagree. That they love each other when there's differences in opinions, right? That you're still loving each other and you're caring for each other. That's a family that's built on the foundation of God. And you're not running to be separate, but you're actually running closer to each other because you're built on God's principles. You know, uh, marriage teaches us to be sacrificial. Yeah, you think you were sacrificial up till now, but you still had some of your freedoms. But now you're not free anymore. You're free together, but you're not free separately. So now when Alex is like, okay, I'm going to go with the guys to the beach or to the mountains or jeeping. Now he's got to tell Lisa that he's going jeeping, right? Now Lisa is not just going to go and hang out with girls and do whatever you do with girls. Now you'll be like, hey, Alex, I'm going to go hang out with girls. Now you guys are going to do a lot of things together. You're going to live together. You're going to spend time together. You're going to do finances together. You're going to watch things together. You're going to play together. You're going to live together. So even though there's that misconception, oh, you're not free anymore. Now you're tied down to your wife. You're tied down to your husband. But you're now free together. You're one, right? So there's a lot of sacrifice. Sacrifice. You're going to start sacrificing your time for each other, which is a great thing. The more you sacrifice for each other, the stronger your marriage will be. The more you sacrifice uh, time for each other, energy for each other, money for each other, the stronger your marriage is going to be. In marriage, you learn to forgive each other. In marriage, you learn to respect each other. In marriage, you learn to love each other even when it hurts, even when there's pain, even when somebody said something nasty to you. Alex said something to you, you said something to Alex, you still love each other. Uh, The other thing I want to say is that marriage is like a workout room or like a gym. 
something that Alex is very familiar with, right? Because that's where he spends most of his time, in the gym. It's like a, it's a work in progress. One thing I really appreciate what you guys did is when you just started dating, you reached out to me and my wife. And you said, hey, we're dating and we need some guidance. And I think that's the first main uh, thing that showed me that you guys are serious about working on your relationship. Uh, and the fact that you actually went through with all the premarital counseling sessions that we had planned. And you reached out to me and you're like, hey, when is our next meeting? When is our next meeting? Right? That's a good sign. That's, that's a sign of someone who wants their relationship to work. And I want to encourage you to continue looking for that. When there's a marriage conference, find time to go to a marriage conference. When there's a retreat, go to a retreat. When there is uh, a time to get together with other married couples, get together with other married couples and just learn how to be a stronger family. The work of marriage doesn't stop with I do. It actually starts with I do. Okay? After today, today's going to be fun. Maybe the next week, right? You guys are going to the honeymoon, right? Somewhere. But after the honeymoon, the work really starts. It's going to be fun. You're going to have some great times and you're going to have some times where you're like, man, we were so stupid last week. I can't believe I said this. I can't believe we did that. But it's going to be fun if you're continuing to grow in your marriage. So I just want to say a few words to you, Lisa, specifically, and then to you, Alex, uh, based on the Bible. And uh, I know that you guys read your Bibles. I know that you rely on the Bible. That's why I want to share based on what the Bible says about what it means to be a good wife and what it means to be a good husband. So first to you, Lisa. So I'm going to be reading for both of you. I'm going to be reading from 1 Peter, first letter that Peter wrote uh, from chapter 3. And here's what he says about wives. So Peter talks about different relationships. He talks about how people should relate to the government, how people should relate to their bosses, managers. And then he says, here's what a family looks like. And he tells the wives, he says, wives, you must accept the authority of your husbands. You must accept his authority. Imagine that. Then, even if some refuse to obey the good news, so if Alex refuses to obey Jesus, your godly lives will speak to him without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. Lisa, don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. And this is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They put their trust in God and accepted authority of their husbands. Now, does God care that you're beautiful for your husband? Of course. Yes, he does. He wants you to be beautiful for him, to be attractive for him. He does care about your outer appearance. He wants you to take care of yourself. But he doesn't want you to make that a priority. Uh, what Peter says is that God, God's priority is not how you're going to look on the outside, but what your character is going to be on the inside. And we, we talked a little bit about this in our conversations, in our sessions. But I just want to point out a few things, and I want to say that this passage doesn't say that now you don't have freedom and Alex is the boss and you do everything that he says. What this passage does say is that you are allowing him to be your leader now. When you were born, your leader was, were your parents. Avil, Valentina, they were your leaders. They were your authority. They took you where you didn't want to go, especially when you were a baby. They disciplined you they told you what to do and what not to do right they cared for you they took care of you they provided for you say thank you, thank you. yeah thank you parents for such an awesome daughter they were your authority and your leadership now after today they are not your authority sorry guys 
You are letting her go. Oh, you're very happy to let her go? Okay, good. Very nice. Now, he is your leader and your authority. Now, with that leadership responsibility comes, he's going to have to take care for you and provide for you. But now you're looking to him to lead you to, you know, to go where God leads you guys to go. So what do you do as a respectful wife? You pray for him. You pray that he actually can listen to God's voice and doesn't do stupid things. Okay. Uh, you support him. You support him as a leader in the family. You support him as a leader in ministry. You concentrate on pleasing God through your actions toward him. So when you're like not happy about something that he does, think about, okay, how I would respond in a way that God would appreciate. So you're pleasing God in your actions towards him. Okay. So gentle and quiet spirit are precious to God. And that's how holy women uh, behaved. They put their trust in God and accepted the authority of their husbands. And I trust that you will be a very great wife. And may God bless you in that. Alex, as people say, with great uh, power and authority comes great, great responsibility. responsibility. Guess what? All the things that her parents were doing, я не говорю за воспитание, okay? You are not to воспитывать ее, okay? You are not to nurture her and tell her about her bad habits. But you are now her leader and authority. But with that comes responsibility. And here's what Peter says in that same passage in verse 7 to you. He says, you, Alex, must give honor to your wife, Lisa. Honor her. Treat her with understanding because you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should so your prayers will not be hindered. Alex, you're now a spiritual leader in your family. Okay, that doesn't mean telling Lisa what, how she should behave. A uh, spiritual leader doesn't mean, Lisa, you need to dress appropriately, okay? Uh, being a spiritual leader doesn't mean, uh, Lisa, you said a bad word, God is going to punish you. Or saying, Lisa, did you do your devotional today? Okay, that's not a spiritual leadership. That's spiritual abuse. <laughs> we don't, you don't want to abuse her spiritually, okay? Spiritual leadership means you lead by being spiritual. You lead by example. So, what does that mean? As soon as you begin to grow spiritually, she's going to follow you. Okay? When she is struggling, you pick her up. You are her strong post that she can lean on. You are that deep-rooted tree that she can come sit under the shade of and find peace. Um, you lead by example. Uh, you love and honor her. Your role is to love her. Your role is to honor her. Like she's the queen. She's Queen Lisa now. She's not just your wife. She's not just someone who came along. She's Queen Lisa. Okay? So what does it mean to love and to honor her with understanding? You are going, you are going to create moments for her where she feels loved. You are going to... Uh, give her gifts you're going to give her attention you're going to say sweet things to her you're gonna say things like you are the best of the best of the best you're gonna be the one who's gonna go kill that bee because she's scared of bees okay what else are you scared of spiders you're gonna chase all the spiders away okay you are going to make her laugh you're not gonna make her cry unless it's crying because you brought flowers right and she's so emotionally overcome but you're picking her up physically emotionally and spiritually that's what it means to love and honor her you're always there for her and most importantly as peter says you're equal partners so 
she's a daughter of God. You're a son of God. And you guys look at each other that way. Okay? Look at each other as children of God. And that will help you to keep your eyes on God and to keep you uh, to, have, to respect and to love each other. Um, one last thing. Most important, no matter what, always forgive each other. Always forgive each other. Don't go to sleep. Don't end the day being bitter towards each other. Always forgive each other. That always helps. Um, that's for you guys. Parents, you guys have some experience already. This is your first letting go, okay? Let go. Дайте им возможность построить свою семью. Let them fail. Not in family, but let them fail in a few tries. It's okay if she can't cook something. It's okay if he can't do something. Okay, it's okay. They will learn. Just let them build their own family, okay? That will be your biggest help. If you want, send them some gifts in the mail, you know. Invite them for lunch, for dinner, but uh, let them have their freedom, okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> Good. Well, it's time for vows. Why don't you come closer to each other? Right here. There you go. Awesome. Uh, you're going to hold each other's hands. Go ahead. Uh, make sure we have the rings ready. Yeah, Lisa, you're going to repeat after me. And uh, then, Alex, your turn will be after that. So we'll start with Lisa. Uh, and you're going to repeat after me. In the presence of God and our family. In the presence of God and our family. I, Lisa, take you. I, Lisa, take you. Alex. Alex. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And to that I pledge thee my faith. And to that I pledge thee my faith. Alex, repeat after me. In the presence of God and our family. In the presence of God and our family. I, Alex, take you, Lisa. I, Alex, take you, Lisa. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And to that I pledge thee my faith. And to that I pledge thee my faith. Very nice. Did you guys realize you promised a lot to each other? Yeah. Okay, I will remind you this in a year. Okay. We're going to pray right now. I would like for you to bow your knees. If you could, please. And um, can, you, can you pull this up? Perfect. Awesome. Okay, go ahead, Lisa. You will pray. Alex will pray, and I'll pray. God, I just want to thank you for today, God, that you gave me this day. And even though Corona ended up, you know, ruining the first one, God, you still gave me this one. And I couldn't be more thankful for all the people that came out to support us, God, and to hold us um, while we struggled to get this process done, God. I ask that you help us, help us in our marriage, God. Help us um, always show others you and sh allow this relationship to show you as well, God. I ask that you please hold us together and keep us together till death do us part, God. I ask that you bless everyone that came here and all those who are watching us, God. Thank you so much for everything. Amen.
Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this wonderful day that you just uh, blessed us with another day. God, I want to thank you for um, blessing me with Lisa and giving her, uh, bringing her into my life. God, I want to thank you um, that I obtained this favor from you, God, and that you blessed me with a wife. God, I want to thank you for this um, place that we just, uh, are able to hear, uh, be here and see your nature and see what you created and celebrate this wedding. God, I want to ask that you just help us, help us through the uh, through the um, lowest points and be with us with, with, through the highest points. God, I want to ask that you just um, help me be a leader, help me be responsible and um, and do what I'm supposed to do, God. I want to ask that you just help us, help us through everything. Amen. Amen. Lord, I want to pray for uh, Alex and Lisa and blessing over their family. Lord, I thank you so much that you have given them this opportunity uh, to find each other. I thank you that you brought them towards each other. Lord, I thank you that through this time of uncertainty, time of uh, stress where they were not sure how it's going to go, you still gave them this opportunity to keep this date and to uh, follow through with their decision. Lord, I pray for blessing over them. I pray for them to be a good husband and a good wife. I pray for this family to be a family that lasts truly till death do them part, Lord. I pray that you give them wisdom. I gave. I pray that you give them um, understanding of your word, understanding and ability to hear your voice in their life. I pray that you give them a strong love. I pray that you give them humility. I pray that you give them understanding of how to build their family in such a way that they will cherish each other, care for each other, love each other, uh, be respectful to, to each other, be humble towards each other. But most importantly, Lord, I pray that may this family be a witness and a testimony to how great you are. May their relationship be a testimony of who you are. May their love be love that is supplied by the love that you give, Lord. May their relationship be a testimony to the miracles that you do in our lives. May they be a testimony of good news and may through their family, many more families be strengthened and encouraged. Lord, I, I pray that you bless them with uh, children. I, play, I pray that you bless them with the little ones who will continue their name, who will give them joy and who will uh, be a blessing in their lives. Lord, I pray that uh, they may continue to grow personally, spiritually, and may in their lives they always bring glory to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can stand. Okay. Time for the rings. We have the rings. Go ahead and do the other side so the cameras can see the beautiful box. All right, so rings, meaning symbol of completeness. You guys know there's no end in a ring, right? So it's a never-ending circle. It's a never-ending commitment to each other, okay? And don't do what I did the first year of marriage. Don't lose your ring, Alex, in an ocean. I have three. Okay. Okay, good. Make sure you have some extras. You're right. Good one. Um, so, uh, Alex, go ahead and grab Lisa's ring, and uh, I will ask you a question, and you have to say yes or no. Alex, do you give your ring to your lovely wife, Lisa, as a symbol of your love for her? I do. I do. Very good. Go ahead. Uh, is that the right finger? Yeah. Good. Just checking. Just checking that you know. Okay. Lisa, do you accept this ring? Hold on. <laughs> do you accept this ring from your loving husband, Alex, as a symbol of your love for him? I do. She does. Very good. Okay. Go ahead and grab his ring. Now, do you give this ring to your loving husband, Alex, as a symbol of your love for him? You do. And do you accept this ring as her symbol of love to you? I do. All right. They accept. Go ahead. Beautiful. Okay. Before you kiss, 
I got to make an announcement. So, may God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and keep this marriage. May the Lord have mercy on you and fill you with grace so that you may live together in this life. And may God of peace sanctify your marriage and your hearts so that you may be faithful to Christ and to each other until he comes again. As a witness to Alex Dutka and Lisa Zubel agreeing to marry each other and to what they have proclaimed in front of God, most importantly, and in front of all these witnesses, your family and friends, uh, I, Alex Ivanov, as a minister of God, in front of all of you, proclaim Alex and Lisa Dutko, husband and wife. What God has joined, let men not separate. In the, in the name of the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. You, Alex, you may kiss the bride. All right. May God bless you guys. Well, you done done me, and you bet I felt it. I tried to beat you, but you so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. Now I'm trying to get back before the cool done run out. I'll be giving it my best. This and nothing's gonna stop me but divine intervention. I reckon it's again my turn to win some or learn some. But I would say this part. No more, no more. Oh, yeah. uh, we can walk, try and walk through. I'm yours. Well, open up your mind and see like me. Open up your plans and damn, you're free. I look into your heart and you find love, 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 love. Listen to the music of the moment people dance and sing. We're just one big family, and it's our God forsaken right to be loved. Love, 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 love. So, it's our day. I'm sure there's no need to come back. Our time is short. This is our fate. I'm yours. Do 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 Spending way too long checking my tongue in the mirror and bending over backwards just to try to see it clearer. But my yeah. Yeah. Yeah.